Alrighty, fantastic. Uh, many thanks for staying with us. Welcome back. You are still watching Hashtag Why in the Morning right here on Y254 TV. And we've got you with much more. But all you can do right about now is plug in using the hashtag Why in the Morning. That's on all our social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well is at Y254 channel. You can find me on my socials as well is at Brian Sakwa 101. The segment right about now is Entrepreneur. Tuesday, where we bring you sometimes influential personalities who have to share about their lives, something that they've started for themselves that has actually, you know, made impact to not only just themselves, but others as well. Now, live with us in studio today on our entrepreneurship segment, she is a household name, I'd say, and a powerhouse in her own right. When she took over the journey in media, she broke and struck your television screens with, with an entertainment show that actually made you love her even more. Her incredible and indelible bubbly personality and smile is a Midas touch. And on top of that, she is the host of The Overdressed Cook, her online TV show that actually broke the internet by storm, 45 her trademark in the content creation world. Ladies and gentlemen, live with us in studio is the unforgettable, the, uh, the, the, the incomparable, the one and the only Anita Nderu. Hi. Hi. How Good are morning. You? Good morning. First of all, I was so, so, so scared that perhaps maybe you couldn't make it. I was like, is she going to make it? Is she going to make it? She always has a busy schedule. We always see things about her on social media. Will she make it? I was just holding my guard up and I'm like, God, please make her come through. But now here you are. I think the person you should have been the most worried about is my new boss this, these days. Her name is Kaya. Hi, and, Kaya. <laughs> and we were, we were more ner my husband and I were more nervous about her knowing we have stuff to do in the morning. Because right. we feel like if she knows we have something to do in the morning, then she keeps us up all night. So right. that would have been your only concern, but fortunately, all went well and we're here now. So, great. Thank you for having me. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you and to meet you in person it's now. It's lovely to meet you too. Apart from seeing you on social media and on TV as well. Oh, well, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, uh, let's get back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, before, uh, be before actually social media, you started off on TV and radio as well. Yep. But you know, a lot of people know you from TV and, and radio. But if you were to actually describe yourself, how would you describe yourself? Perhaps in two words, or three, or even more. You can add in there something. That's a tough one. I, um, I, I, was, I was not ready for that one. Um, how would I describe myself? Um, um, I, I, I do think that despite the fact that that's how everybody knows me, that is how I would describe myself because that's been my 10-year uh, journey in the world of um, employment and entrepreneurship. So I would just put it as... I am a TV and a radio presenter um, and a content creator of late. Right. And do you, do you feel like you always had a calling to actually gravitate towards media? Because I remember when you first came uh, on Team Republic, you actually took over the Kenyan 254 uh, media space by storm. Everybody You're was talking about Anita. Have you seen Anita? Who is this chick Anita? And then, those, the, the, then it followed with a lot of you know, uh, shows and then there was also a lot of you know, conversations on blogs. How did that actually come for you? So I knew I wanted to do television um, thanks to Jimmy Gathu. I All used right. to watch him on TV and after I watched him on TV, I was like, I have to be on television. And there was a time I was uh, participating in this competition called the Presidential Award Scheme. And I'm from Eldoret. And, um, you know, and, we, and we, we came to Nairobi for part of the competition and his show was on and they were recording on location. And I refused to leave the area where they were recording until they interviewed me. And then even um, so they interviewed me and I was on I was literally on TV for a millisecond. You know, when they're just like, what's your name? And I'm like, my name is Jerry Nderu. And there was something about that experience and then just seeing myself on TV and just watching a really young person on television that made me want to be on television. And it right. just became my dream. Actually, when I was growing up, the only channel that we had at home was KBC for the longest time. And we wa I, I, I knew KBC down to what episode comes, I mean, what show plays at what time and da da da. And um, there was even a time I wanted to be a, a news anchor because of Catherine Casavulli. Like it was right. just one of those things where 
for a very long time from when I was a teenager, I knew I wanted to be on television. So right. then I was very grateful when that dream came to pass after very many auditions of being told no. Um, I got to be on the you, team. You were told no? Yes. Anita was told no, guys. I, I, I feel like I matured in the space over time to a place where it may seem like it was not possible, but it's, it's, it's something that I grew into because when I joined when I joined television I was still very raw talent I didn't know how television worked I didn't know how production worked I didn't know much about how this space worked it's something that I have built and grown in for over 10 years to get to where I am today and yeah when I joined it was it was great um, Teen Republic was fantastic um, Antonio Sol was my co-host and our chemistry was just incredible and I really really enjoyed that show and it's what got me into the into wanting to be in the women and youth empowerment space right. as well because I got to meet a lot of young, um, amazing, talented women and young, amazing, talented youth in the process and I absolutely loved it. Um, and then I transitioned to radio um, after that and I worked for Capital FM for another seven years. That's for hits, not homework? No, that was news actually. Oh, that was news so as I a news anchor. To public to go work as a news anchor at Capital FM. Right. I worked as a news anchor on radio for about seven years. And then in 2018 is when I transitioned to Hits Not Homework when I joined Tracy and Ann Mora. Um, right. Yeah. Did that for a year. And then in between all that, I was still doing the trend as a panelist and then eventually left mainstream media in 2021 and um, continued hosting and producing The Overdressed Cook. Wow, fantastic. What, what um, an amazing journey. Just a summary of that. Now, uh, when it comes to support, uh, you're also big on acknowledging your friends, your family. Would you say like your biggest support system has always been your family? And if yes, uh, how has been the reception so far throughout your journey, even growing up? Would you say that it's something that they nurtured from as early as a younger age when you're a little, you know, a girl? Um, I think... It, it, of, of my family members, the one person who I'd say has always been my biggest fan and has done her best to nurture literally anything I said I wanted to do was my mom. Because she wow. was always the person who had, my, my career changed every time. You know that thing you do in, I don't know if it's an African household thing, where when you want to make your parents happy, you'll be like, today I want to be a doctor. And they're like, oh yeah. And tomorrow you're like, today I'm going to become a pilot. Okay. So my right, mom, yeah. no matter what I said I wanted to do, she was extremely supportive of it. Um, so much so that when I wanted to be, because I w when I went to study, I went to study International Business Administration. Right. And my mom, I went to her and I was like, to be very honest, I want to be a TV presenter. But this is a fun degree to do at the same time. And every time I had an audition or I had somewhere that I needed to be, um, my mom was always the one who would finance the, let's get a cute outfit for this and let's get nice shoes for that. And um, yeah, and my friends and family generally were always very supportive of... Um, my career and my husband as well and I generally don't think I would be able to do a lot of what I'm able to do now without the support that they give me um, and the great advice that I get from them but also my peers in the industry right yeah so I'm um, shout out to them as well but more so to every single fan who has watched me from my journey ever since I joined the Teen Republic to when I moved to radio to when content creation became a really big deal and have supported me on every single platform as well. I mean, I have to thank each and every one of you because I wouldn't be here without them because yeah. you can scream and shout all you want on television and radio, but then without your fans and without people listening and watching you, I don't think you'd get very far. Yeah, w which is absolutely true. And uh, when, it, when it comes to also your career, uh, like I mentioned, you're big also on, on acknowledging your uh, f friends and family. Uh, a lot of people would really want to know, where did Anita Ndero grow up? Did she grow up in Stats? Because, you know, they've always what? known you as this <laughs> chick who is f chic, fancy. You have all it, you know, going for you on social media as well. Like you post what's literally what you're doing. Like what you post is real. So a lot yeah. of people are like, where did she, did she grow up? Did she drop from heaven? Okay, I'm actually all, grew up from stats. Right. Um, also, chic girls are born in Eldoret and are existing in Eldoret. So I was born and raised in Eldoret, um, where I stayed until I was 15, studied there as well, went to Golab Lachab Academy, um, then moved to um, Uganda for four years, where I went to Vienna College for high school. Then after my A-levels, I came and I moved to Nairobi after the post-election violence. Right. Um, then just 
I, ever since I moved here when I was 18, I pretty much stayed in Nairobi ever since. Went to uni here and then this became home and now I live and work here. And as for posting what I put up on social media, I feel like social media, you just have to be very real and honest about what you're posting and it's one of those things where in the beginning i feel like everybody's usually lost as to what your identity is in social media and what you want to share and um you know what your are you putting up a facade or are you being yourself but i feel like just like everybody else when i joined social media i didn't really know who or what i wanted to be on that space and then now more than ever i want to be as authentic and as real about what i'm doing who I'm doing it with, what's happening in my life, um, what I'm sharing about my life as well. Because um, when it's fun times, it's fun times for everybody. But sometimes when you have like struggles that you're going through or different experiences that you're going through, I, I would hate for someone to think my life is perfect because right. it's not. And right. when no. it's not, I'd want them to know how I'm handling the different situations so right. that it's not this, um, it's not creating a picture perfect image that is non-existent. Yeah. Sometimes things are murky. And you're human as well. Very human. And speaking of that, uh, how do you literally uh, stay grounded? Because, you know, sometimes even in the streets of social media, we call them the streets nowadays, things can be really tough. You post something. Like, I remember you posted your baby bump uh, when, when you had your oh, uh, like a little me. photo shoot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a beautiful photo of you right there. When you posted that baby bump photo shoot, those are a lot of comments in there. People are like, huh, how did she now decide? Did she, is she now, you know, posting naked? Nini, nini? How do you stay grounded even all? <laughs> All that negativity comes in in as much as you know there's people you even don't know and sometimes it's people who you even know commenting on at the comment section as well um first of all you saw comments that i didn't see now i'm not go now i'm gonna go and actually look through those comments um so this is one thing i'm gonna say thank you to my followers for is i don't know what is wrong with people on twitter see on twitter people will say things to you where you'll just be like okay 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 i don't know what's going on with your day but that's cool um instagram people are people are a little more um reserved with their comments you know right, it's kind yeah. of i feel like on instagram it's more if we have nothing nice to say we prefer to say nothing at all, all whereas right. on twitter it's i'm thinking it i probably shouldn't say it but i'll type right. it out anyway um i will in, um, um, i will say there are times when despite a lot of positive comments there'll be that one annoying comment that you will see that might just kind of ruin your mood or so to, um, to speak but then over time and I've had time to kind of grow into this social media space as much as um, it, it's not been around for that long a time I think I'm doing better right. at just ignoring and using the block button a lot when right. it comes to people who just have not, nothing constructive to say because i accept constructive criticism right. i just don't accept flat out hate and abuse especially when it has when it when someone comes after your family or your friends or your puppy and you're just like right. what does this have to do with this image you know right. and uh, um does it bother you sometimes would you say you know yeah. when people get on your nerves that much they even don't know you does it bother you they it does sometimes but then i am learning to you know those things where you're just like mm, okay and then you just block the person. The All block right. button is actually a very, very good button to use. I came to realize it's a very, very fantastic button to use. All right. Because I'm like, if I'm, sa I'm saving you the trouble of having to not come onto my page and, you know, have nothing nice to say. All right. Interesting. Now, let's switch back to your career. Uh, you've done, you've done t uh, television as well. You've been on Hits Not Homework. Uh, what would you say was the secret, actually, that uh, you used, or the weapon, or let's say the formula well, <laughs> that you used towards getting towards so that direction? Because, you know, uh, people will see you on radio as well. Here you're out on radio, then you let it on come on TV. For others, it's so hard for them to even get such gigs. But for you, it seems like it was such a seamless process. It seems like the universe goes to you all day, in and out. Well, I, if that's how the universe feels, I hope the universe stays doing that. But um, it's a lot of hard work. Um, like I said, to get onto television in the first place, I cannot even count how many auditions I went to where I was told no um either your uh, how you sound doesn't work or you're not the personality we're looking for or abcd so that took years 
just to get on TV in the first place. And then once I did get on television, um, when I heard the Capital FM was auditioning, again, I just went and tried my luck. And with each um, job that I've ever gotten, I've genuinely just tried my best and, you know, you, you do your best and you hope that God will do the rest. And then, um, and in each one, it's been difficult. Even when I got onto radio, for a whole year, we were being taken off air for training. And it's, it, it was one of those things where you're like, am I going to lose my job? Did I just resign from one job to come and do a different job where I might, I'm not, I'm not good enough? Because every time you, you're on air, you're told, mm, you're not doing it right back to training. Oh, right. you're not doing it right back to training. So people don't see that side of your job where there's so much work that has to go into it. The seven years in capital took an entire year of training that almost can, never, it's not even really a whole year of training. Every single time that you went back into the newsroom, you had to learn to be a better reporter, a better presenter. Right. It was it was continuous work that was just um, that you were putting in that someone doesn't see when they hear you on the radio. Right. So it's it, it may seem like, oh, it was just so easy and it, it was always working out, but then you were I was always putting in work in the background. Um, let's see what other well, hits not homework how I ended up on it was actually a transition where I was moved from the newsroom to the show and um, I, I'm actually I did want to be on a different show but then that's the one that I was put on but then even that took years and years and years and years of work and then the trend even that has been a continue it was just like a continuous year in year out of you know trying to you know, do the right, uh, do, do your research, because you just can't come on air and talk right. about topics that you've not done research on. So there's a lot of um, background work that's taking place that when you do come on air, seems yeah. like you're doing great. Right. Um, but, but there's um, even a rundown, and even with the producer behind even the content as well. It's, uh, it's a, you, you're on television. You know right. how much work it is. Exactly. You can't just show up in the morning and be like, great, good morning, let's do this. Like, this, it's, it's actually a lot of work. Right. And speaking of media, uh, all of a sudden you went MIA. People never saw you on TV anymore. You are no longer you are no longer on radio for quite a period of time, and they are questioning: Did Anita uh, exit mainstream media, especially Kenya media? Or maybe a lot of people are expecting to see you maybe in maybe foreign media, make a comeback somewhere on BET or maybe CNN. Uh, but uh, uh, the um, thing is, you, you actually are on some sort of a hiatus in mainstream media space right now. Are you planning to make a comeback? And if yes, are you still on a hiatus? What's the plan? I don't, I, don't, um, I don't know what my future holds with mainstream media at the moment. Um, there's, there's nothing in the woodworks. That's, that's what, that I can tell you for sure that I know of. I am very much enjoying the content creation space that I'm in right now with my web series, The Overdressed Cook, as well as I started YouTubing recently and it's just been a really fun journey for me. Um, just... Um, creating and editing my own show and just seeing myself blossom in that space um, of being a mom fluence and just being a new mom and navigating that journey. And that's, that's kind of where my headspace is at the moment. Right. Um, I don't know if I will get back to mainstream media, but if I do, right. um, I do know it will still be in the entertainment space. The entertainment I space, don't right. know if I would go back to doing very serious news because I did enjoy working in the newsroom, but it is, um, it's a lot of work. And I don't know whether you know this, but news can be very depressing. Yeah, sure, all sure, the absolutely. Because, you, you know, know, headlines come in that are so heartbreaking, profound, and you have to do it, you know? Yeah, and it's, um, it's... Would um, you say you've, you, at some point, you ever got affected when you, like, read a news piece that was just, you know, profound and you, heartbreaking? You, it's, it's impossible not to be. You would, right. you had to keep your emotions in check and you had to... You had to be impartial in just how you feel about almost everything, but then it's a it's it's hard. Like the so many bad things happen in the world in one day, right. and on a daily basis you're reading bad news. You know, so you're just like yeah. It's a there's a certain level level of mental health awareness I feel that you need to work in a newsroom yes, and right. stay right. in a good um, um, mental space. And um, yeah, and I've had my battle with mental health. Um, issues issues well. before, and yeah. I just, it's, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm happier in the space that I'm in now. Right. Yeah. What do you feel like maybe, um, if, if you were to make a comeback, maybe, what do you feel like you are too big for the mainstream media or the what? mainstream space, and maybe because of your numbers, they won't allow you to come back, 
or it's just a professional hiatus to focus on your personal journey and growth? First of all, I would not be Anita Nderu without mainstream media. I would not be here right now talking to you if NTV didn't give me a chance 11 years ago and Capital FM didn't give me a chance three years later and then NTV gave me another chance another two years later. Um, I, I definitely would not be here without mainstream media. I in no way, um, um, I'm, um, I don't think it's, I think the hiatus was necessary because it's almost like you kind of have to let go to let grow sometimes. Yeah, let go. I had been grow. in the right. same space doing the same job for over seven years. You know, sometimes yeah. you have to leave the job for other people to get the job. And sometimes you have to leave the job just so that you can grow and find out more about yourself. Like, what else am I about outside of what I've done for many, many, many years. And if you've been in the same space and you've sort of stagnated in the area that you're in and you just want to you know, grow out of that space, right. it's important for you to take a step back or take a step forward in a different um, platform and just see what more you can do and mo what more you are about. Right. So like I said, I'm happy to come back to mainstream media, but maybe I would come back in a different show? capacity. A talk show would do for you? I would do a talk show. A mental that's health talk show, a girl power kind of conversation. Round anything table. that supports the girl child, I am definitely down to do On 100%. It. Right. Speaking of that, uh, your show uh, that broke the, the interviews by storm, the groundbreaking, the overdressed cook. I remember when the first that's episode uh, was, uh, was posted on social media, it actually went viral. And those are a lot of comments because of uh, uh, some of your friends that you're actually uh, filming the show with. How did you take that feedback and reception? And I remember also at that time, uh, KFCB was like, hey, who is this girl? What's she all about? How did you take it? I was it? like, kill me too, my man. What's up? Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So this is what I'll say about that. Um, I will always be an ally. And, I, and, and the show that we did was purely entertainment. And it was just my friends and I having fun on set. Of course, um, every all content that's put out be it on mainstream media or social media or on whatever platform really, um, will rub people off one way or another. Right. And certain issues are sensitive to Kenyans and you know we're all entitled to our own opinion, we're all entitled to show our support in whichever way that we know how to do best. And um, I respected their opinions um, right. and I hope they can respect mine as well. And um, I just hope that we will continue to learn and grow as a country and maybe do a little research on what we don't understand as opposed to just um, shun it or sort of um, cocoon it into a space where we just assume something is purely sexual without understanding that there's human beings involved with actual feelings and actual lives and um, you know just try to learn and better understand what the LGBTQ plus community is about and not attack it the way that it is, you know? Um, it's human beings behind all these faces at the end of the day and all these lives at the end of the day. And I just hope we, I hope that one day we will be having a very different conversation about this. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, Andra, uh, not Andra, uh, Anita Nderu Limited is actually uh the, 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 the force behind uh, the overdressed cook. Yeah. How actually did you choreograph that up? Is it because maybe you wanted to also start to get, like your own a little media space, even with the introduction of your brainchild, uh, the overdressed cook as well? Actually, that was um, my husband's idea. He's a very brain savvy, um, that's a business savvy man. And his opinion was, if you're gonna have different aspects of your life that you're handling or managing, it would be best to do it under your own company. And that's kind of how that came about. It wasn't with the intention of having my own media house per se or anything. It was just to have um, a company where that would umbrella all the different projects that I choose to undertake as I, you know, go along in life. Because um, one of the things that I'm very grateful for with um, the evolution of technology is right, it, yeah. it's now created many different platforms for young people to make money outside of the traditional ways in which we used to make money. Before, and I'm, yeah. You know, and I mean, look at how, look at the way 
young people are breaking barriers and breaking glass ceilings and making a ton load of money in all the different um, ways that we are now, be it having your own products or having your own shows or just making money off marketing different brands. So yeah, so the whole point of the company was just to have an umbrella for all my different projects. All right, so maybe in future we might look up to like uh, you employing some people who are jobless. I would really love to do that. All right. You know, the, um, if, um, if I continue to make money, then I'm very happy to employ young people and assist them in uplifting their standards of living as well and just help them um, learn what I have learned as I have go, um, gone along because I think it's very important that as you grow in your space um, it's one of those things where I don't believe in this thing where just because you really suffered to get to where you are right. the other person also has to, to really suffer, suffer right. to get to the whole point of me having gone through what I went through to get to where I am today is so that it can be easier for, for, the, for the person paving behind way, me you know, paving the way for somebody else to have right. an easier time to get to where I am now and right. you know yeah. and it's kind of it's a, something that happened on social media yesterday if you'll just allow me to speak yeah. about uh, it real quick that I'm very do. excited please about yeah. is um, the social media space um, there's a lot of money to be made in um, the social media space and one of the things that um, influencers I would love for them to continue to do is be more transparent about their followers and how much they're requesting for in terms of the, um, their rate cards and what that's going to do is if I have 10,000 followers today and you have a million followers today we should not be in the same boardroom discussing the same amounts of money right. like if I'm a 10 you're at a million I would I should want to get to where you are because if I get to where you are and the certain benchmark of how much money you're, money you're earning it inspires me to want to work harder and do better and get to where you are so I can earn what you're earning and I think it's the same with pretty much every job that young people pursue where I feel with all the different positions that we're in, I feel like you need to grow and make better the space that you're in so that when the person gets to where you are, they can, they can find a better situation to work in and more money to earn. And, the, and the, the higher you grow in an organization or the higher you get in your social media space, you're growing. It's right, not absolutely. just, it's just not no. looking booked and busy. You're actually right. making money as you're growing. Right. You know, and yeah. Um, yeah. The goal is money. And I love the fact that you spoke about money. On this segment all the time, I ask all my guests, how is your relationship with money? I ask them, do you attract money? Does money follow you? Do you chase money or money chases you? Now, let me bring it back to you. Do you attract money? Is money attracted to you? I feel like all the things that you mentioned just now are just everything that happens to me with money. Um, I think with just like most people, I have had my fair share of struggles of learning how to manage money. Um, and I have made a lot of money, but I've also lost a lot of money. How much is the biggest? You know, when you say made a lot, somebody will say, Anita Andero made 10 billion and she never I told did. us. I did. She never I even did. announced Absolutely. it on Manifesting. Instagram. Manifesting. <laughs> Why would I do that? I'm not trying to attract people to come and rob me. Um, I What I will say is I have, I will, I'll, 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 what, I'll put it like this. The most amount of money I ever made was in the social media space. Wow, the digital space. The digital space. That is where, that's the first time I ever made a six figure, I ever received a six figure check. And I was like, wait, From content. what? Yes. Right. And that's why I'm always, I'm, I'm always like, listen, if you're, the content creation space is an incredible space to, to make money generally. Right. And if we all manage, if we learn to manage it well, and we all look out for each other and ensure that nobody is, you're not undercutting people, you know, yeah. you're, not, you're not accepting less than what your value is, you're standing up for what your value is, we can make, we can, we can, we can change our lives in this space, right. you know? And um, it's just about, you know, coming together and looking out for each other. Uh, speaking of looking out for each other, uh, before we talk about motherhood, which is just uh, another different topic that you're passionate about as well, yes. uh, you are a fashionable uh, personality as well. Thank Your you. elegance and style is just out of this world. And uh, for a lot of people back at home would ask and question, how does this Anita Nero just manage to stay afloat fashion-wise when it comes to even the attire, the uh, adoring, the ensembles and, and the dresses? Like, how do you go about that? Is it easy for you? Is it, it has always been just a seamless thing for you like that? So clearly you have not seen me lately on Insta stories. I have been living in Deras um, ever since becoming a mom. My, um, 
my a disruption <laughs> happened. You know, there was um, <laughs> it, 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 my the the outfits I was wearing were, were not were not working for right. the for the motherhood space in terms of breastfeeding. But then, um, generally, as far as um, dressing up is concerned, um, I just love being extra. Extra is like for it's, you. It's Anita just, it's Ndewe my and thing. extra. Anita is extra. Same what's up. It's um right. <laughs> or what's up as my mom would say it. It's just I love dressing up. It makes you feel good when you look great. Um I mean the more fabric the better. You'll never hear whenever I'm with any of the designers that I love working with, from the native woman to style by Naomi, there's never gonna be a time you'll hear me saying that's too much or don't right. add that. I'm always like just wh whatever else we can do to make this fabulous, let's do it. And I just think it makes you feel good. And even if, you I don't know, you're trying out for a job or you're, I don't know, you're going somewhere. I mean, don't you want to look good dress and feel good? good? I yeah. think it, it just kind of helps. Presentability, literally. You yeah. know, just um, dress up how you want to be perceived. And I, I don't know, I find it very uplifting and just really great. It just right. lifts my mood when I look great. And I just love doing it. Yeah, and you're also, your personality is bubbly as well. So it actually complements, even with the bold colors and everything. Yeah, it's right. uh, something I love to do. Right, interesting. And uh, now let's switch gears to motherhood. Uh, when you first posted your hubby on socials, it was like, there he, there she goes, Anita Nderu, there she goes. And speaking of oh, that, her hubby is in the studio with us yeah. right here. So uh, maybe just uh, a little bit uh, of a story. How did you guys meet? How did you fall in love with him? Because you know, a lot of people are expecting he's definitely maybe a deputy president of our country. Okay, first of all, where do you guys get these perceptions of me? Um, and speaking of perception as well, why does it, why does it always like, you know, make people have perceptions? You tell me. You're the one who's been dishing them ever since I sat here. Um, so um, I met my husband through... So my best friend is married to his best friend, but somehow we had never met in all the years that he'd been coming in and out of Kenya. Best friend, right? Um, so, so my friend um, is married to his friend. Oh, wow, okay. Right? So then um, at some point, she introduces me to him, and um, she just she was just like, you two are the most unlucky love people I've ever met. And what? I think I'm going to introduce the two of you and, okay. you know, just get to know each other. Um, she introduced us initially with the plan of you guys just be friends and get to know each other. and Let's see how it goes. Right. Um, and then I met him and we just spoke for a really long time and we got to know each other. And it was just different. Right. It was like one of those. The vibe, the connection. It right. was it was just something else. Cause I, and I get asked that a lot, like, how did you know? that he He's was the, the one, one. Right. and I can, I, I don't know how to explain it, but um, this love just felt different. He just felt different and um, the mental space I was in when I was with him was very different. The, the level of peace of um, just of heart, of mind, of happiness, of everything just felt different and I just knew that um, he was the one and we just get along um, really well and where we don't get along we learn from each other there's um, a great respect between the two of us um, um, the the love that he shows to my friends and my family right, and yeah. vice versa and I mean his family is just great and uh, it just it we just gelled in a way that um, it was just different if right? it, it, it was just different and right. it just felt like it was meant to be and um, we just happily ever after and the rest is history. History, like we say, the added yeah. ghost. And speaking of history, uh, when uh, you're now a mother as well, now yeah. congratulations on Thank that you. one. Uh, uh, would you say things have changed? Like since you became a mom, there's a lot that has changed with, you know, even your mindset, even when it comes to the relationships you have with people, the kind of conversations you have. Would you say it has changed you, but for the better part of it? I would definitely say motherhood has changed me. Um, into a way better human being in so many ways. I, I even care more for the environment now than I did than before. Because when now you were I'm single. Like, yeah, because it, when, <laughs> when I was single, I was like, yo, plastic bottles. But then now I'm just like, no, like, we, need, <laughs> we need to go organic and we need to care for the environment. I want, I want Kaya to live in a world where um, there's fewer toxins. And I want, her name is Kaya Gesheri Kaya. Catalina Raftri. There a, you go. A lot of R's there, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um, but um, I wanted to grow up in an environment that's way better than the one that we've unfortunately 
created. So I care more about recycling now. I care more about um, the toxins that go into my home now. Um, I care more about what I eat now. I want to live longer, you right. know. Um, Amen. Um, I'm like, I'm just, I'm happily married and I love my kid. And I'm like, I just want to live long for them. And not that I didn't want to before, but then I care right. about it just a little bit more now. Um, uh, and I think... In terms just, of relationships now, the people you relate to, uh, um, the conversation, even the networks as well. I, I think something about motherhood just genuinely makes you care more about where you, um, where you, where your energy goes. Right. Where your peace of mind is and where you spend your time. Like it's, it's almost like you become impatient to things that don't serve you anymore. Right. It's an incredible thing and I'm very grateful. For, and I have great respect for moms. As much as I respected them before, I have an even greater respect for them now. Um, right. It's um, time becomes this thing where I call it the zombie mode. That's right. what motherhood is to me where you don't even know where time goes. You almost right. never have time. Right, too. Um, and every time that you do have, you have to really valuably spend it because there's just so many places, so many things that you need to do right. and you just need to have time for yourself and for all those things. Um, but just generally, and it's made me want to be a better entrepreneur. It's made me want to make more money. I, yeah, wa I, I want my family to live well, you right. know. Um, it just, it, it made, it's made me become, I'd say I've matured more. Right. And as compared to like the Anita we knew before, to, like yes. the old Anita, this is the new Anita. Yeah, I, I, right. I'm, I'm proud of the person that I've become now right. um, and the person I'm becoming. I feel like I'm evolved. I'm not, I'm not evolved, I'm You're evolving. Still evolving, right. Yeah. Anita evolving. Yeah. Right. And speaking of that, uh, uh, when it comes to even uh, your, your hubby as well, you posted him on social media. There was a lot of comments and feedback as well. Do you feel like sometimes it's too much? Like people were just too much in your business. Immediately you posted him. They're like. I think they were very nice. Uh, Generally. The, 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 the feedback was positive. I mean, regardless of what they say, I still love my man. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, I, 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 don't, I don't think there was. A, if somebody had anything mean to say, that would just, that's on them, really. But right. generally, everybody was, everybody loves love. Right. You know, and I didn't really, unless, again, you saw something that I didn't see. And now you're going to make me kind of go and be like, I really want to read these comments now. Right. Um, yeah. Everybody was just really nice and really supportive. And everybody was just loving love. And uh, one of the things that I do appreciate about the online community that I have right. is that they're generally very lovely supportive people right. where they love you know that you know that hashtag love this for you right. um i love happiness for them and they love happiness for me in return and you know as long as you're doing something that makes you happy i don't i don't think there's usually room for some uh, if somebody really has to seek deep within them to find a reason to right. be unhappy for you when you when you seem to be visibly and clearly happy. Right. And I'm very grateful for just how lovely and supportive everyone is. Um, my Even online in-laws, well. I love them. Even oh, your, f your, your family, your close family as well. Oh my right. God, my family loves him. Right. Can I tell you a funny story? Please do. So my dad um, always said we cannot introduce any man to him unless we intend to marry that man. That was my dad's number one rule. So we were not allowed to introduce boyfriends, nothing. He wanted to meet just the one. So then and he was the one. He was he's the only guy who's ever met only my dad. Guy. Only guy. Like since you ever started dating Anita, yes. he is the only guy. Yes. That your dad ever set his eyes on. I mean my dad has seen oh. the guys I'm dating, but then my dad was like, Don't introduce them to me unless you know, or like, cause I don't want to, I don't want to create right. a relationship with them, and then right. you guys don't work out, and then I have to meet another guy. So that was just never my There's dad's no mo. It was like it was a no for him. Okay. So then I always knew that the day that my dad meets the one, that guy will get the speech of a lifetime. My dad will issue threats one after another. My dad was so nice to Barrett. I was just like, are you kidding me? I'm like, right. dad, at least one threat. Say something in the lines of, if you Spit dare fire. hurt my. Nothing. Spit thunder. <laughs> he was it so was nice. All kumbaya. My mom was like, right. it was like love at first sight for her too. Wow, My siblings amazing. love him. Um, right. And then his family is so fantastic as well. I always used to be really scared of in-laws. I don't know about how you feel about in-laws, but right. I love my in-laws. They're fantastic as well. So it's generally been a lot of love all around. My all friends around, love yeah. him to bits and pieces. They all get along with him. Okay. So much so, some of them even switched camp. They're like Why? his friends now. Okay. And then I'm just like, it's fine, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. You know, how does this give you by imagine? Right, interesting, <laughs> amazing. 
You know, a lot of people actually didn't know that, but now you said it. Now, uh, as we sum it up, I'm told we have two minutes, yep. but I have to ask like two, three, four questions part of faster, so I, I hope will try you to manage your answer. answer. Uh, what is that one thing that you hold so dear to you as well? And uh, what is that one heartbreaking moment that you had to endure for a very long time, you persevered and you learned a lesson, and you'd say it has actually made you who you are today? First, start with what is that one thing you hold so dear to you? Um, I mean, currently it's kind of obvious it's my family, um, right. my new family, my old family, um, the wonderful um, career that I've had and just the lessons that I've learned in the process. And I hold dear all my past mistakes that have helped me evolve into the person I'm evolving into now. All right. Now, uh, uh, what is that one thing that you, uh, you also endured for a very long time, you persevered, that also made you who you are today? 2018 was a know. horrible year for me. It 2018. Was, 2018 was a horrible year for me. Um, a lot happened behind the scenes that, I will, that unfortunately the, the, the public has never been privy to um, right. that led to possibly the, ne the West. Um, it was a mental breakdown, basically, and the right. West to two, three years of my life after that. And um, it was just a really low point in my life, in my career, and just um, as a person. And I'm grateful that I persevered through that to get to where I am, to acknowledging that mental health is a serious issue. And yes. we have to look out for ourselves and allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling and work on it, seek and help. And have conversations around it. Have conversations it, yeah. around it, please. Professional seek a therapist, well. right, you yeah. know. Um, it's important to address mental health issues and not ignore it. Right. Um, so I would say 2018 is one, one of, of your lowest moments. Definitely the lowest point of my life. And um, just 2018, 2019. And I'm grateful that I came out on the other side. Right. Maybe any future, any future uh, projects that you've got that you're working on that you can tease and maybe tell people, like you mentioned, maybe you, you could be making a comeback on uh, TV, KBC is here. I don't maybe know. Maybe you're pitching, call pitch, me, pitch, call pitch, me. pitch your proposal. Uh, very happy yeah. to come back to mainstream media. Um, um, we would be happy to do that. I am working on a project right now that's around the field of non-toxic um, um, you know, um, environmentally friendly baby products, but I will tell you what that is um, on my social um, in the near future. Um, what else am I working on? The, um, the overdress cook will be coming back, so tune into that. Please do follow Invite me on social me media at Anita Ndero. <laughs> I would love to have you on my show. What do you like to eat? Do you know um, how to cook? I, I know how to cook. Basic ugali. For me, ugali. With I have anything. done that with Mimo Karanja already, but we can right. think of something to do together. Right. Um, um, I think just for now, that's generally what I'm up to. And um, yeah, do subscribe right. to my Instagram, by the way. I have that button now, so be sure to check that out. Yeah, the social media, which is at Anita Nderu on all platforms? On all platforms. I made right. sure to, to get my name when I was 23 so that nobody, apart from my TikTok, whoever has my at Anita Nderu on TikTok, just give me back my channel, please. Thank you very oh, much. Your I channel really got suspended? That. Is that what you say? No, somebody took my name. Oh, somebody is like a doppelganger or imitation. No, they're just at Anita Nderu. And I'm All just right. like, but that's my name. Just give, me, right. give me back Please my name. Please give her name. It's a trademark. You know, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. By the way, I've just remembered, you're best friends with uh, Amin Abdi Rabah. She mentions you a lot. Right? I absolutely love her. Right. She's your bestie? Your yes. best friend? Like best friend, best friend, best friend? Yes, she is. Okay, I'd love to meet her as well, now that uh, I've met you. Is that, is that, was that your plug to get me to now talk Connection. to Amina to get her they onto the show? They say use somebody to get to another. I see what another. you're doing. And then he did it on <laughs> TV, so now I have to oh do my it. Gosh. Oh my God. Look at me now. But uh, in my mind, I'm like, who interviews Very Anita? Smart. Who Absolutely interviews smart. Anita? Anyway, story for another day. Thank you so much, Anita Ndero. I Thank wish you would have had me. more time to I ask many questions, well. so many questions and answered. Please, if we invite you again, please come back. I'll be happy. Please, I hope. You know, when I, when I was giving you that call, I was like, I was told, just give her a call. She'll you pick. called me on WhatsApp. Who I calls know, right? on WhatsApp? I know, right? I was like, let me just call her at a place where I know she will pick because this is the internet and the internet's easier. So and I, then I'm go and you pick the Send call. Send me a right? text message and call right. me the traditional way. Th that would go. I tried. You never picked, though, the first time. 
I was probably doing something with Kaya. Kaya okay. is my excuse for okay, everything Kaya. these days. Okay, <laughs> Kaya. Lovely Kaya. Adorable Kaya. But thank you so much, Anita. Thank Definitely you for having me. we look forward to host you once again right here on Y254 and even many other stations as well. Thank you so much for coming and for your time. And uh, that has been an up close and uh, personal with the lovely, the gorgeous Anita Andero right here with us in studio today. We are calling it a day. You can find us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. Is at Y254 channel. My socials is at Brian Sankwa 101. And be rest assured we've got you with amazing and much more programming lined up next for you. In the meantime, see you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you for having me.